What's up guys, I'm Scott and today I'm going to show you how anyone can turn this into this. So as a bit of background, I've recently been posting some pictures on Instagram and someone asked me how I painted my pox walkers. So I kind of wanted to show you guys a really quick tutorial on basically turning a grey model into something that's tabletop ready, if not a little bit better. And anyone can do this. And I kind of just want to share this with you. So let's get started. So to start off with this model, I'm going to give it a bit of a base coat. I'm going to use Ultharan Grey, hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, and we're just going to run it through an airbrush. I'm using literally 50-50 uh, mix, one-to-one -one ratio with window cleaner from Wilco. Really, really cheap, really easy. It's going to give us a really good base to start working on without losing too much of a detail. So even if you don't have an airbrush and you want to paint it by hand, this is the sort of thing you should end up with. Don't go too heavy with the paints because the last thing you want to do is lose the detail. It's a really good model. We're going to do really basic painting on this, so keeping the detail in there is quite key. First colour I'm going to be using for a shade is Reichland Flesh Shade. It's really good on top of Ultharan Grey. It gives a really good flesh tone. And with the shade on your brush, all you're going to do is go across the model. Make sure you get it, the shade into all of the recesses. You're basically going to dye the Ulfarin Grey more of a flesh tone colour. It's really easy to do. Don't go too mad because if flesh tone dries in a lot of the recessed parts, you're going to get puddling and you don't want that. It's going to look a bit terrible. But this is why I want to keep the detail in the first place. You're going to notice it sinks into the recesses, comes off the highlight areas and just kind of dyes it instead and gives you a really even tone in literally one coat. When you've finished, this is what sort of result you should have from the model. You'll notice it's dyed the colour nicely. The Ultharan Grey now looks more like flesh. The cool thing is it looks more like uh, rotten flesh um, or bad flesh rather than anything um, you'd find on a normal model. So it, it fits the Chaos theme quite well. The next shade we're going to be looking at is Druki Violet. I love this shade for anything that's quite alienish or tentacle-ish. I think it works really, really well. So we're going to use it on this model. And you're going to use it in exactly the same fashion. Just be careful not to get too much over the rest of the Rikon Flex shade because it'll give it a bit more of a, a bad tone. But if you go over all the tentacles and then try and blend um, the gaps between the standard skin tone that you've just done and the rest of the tentacles as well. Just take it nice and steady, don't go too mad. Once you finish with Daruki Violet, you're probably going to need two coats uh, realistically, but you will get a really nice purple colour over the top of the Ultharan Grey given the appearance of tentacles. We're going to now go to Agrex Earthshade. Again, we're going to use exactly the same method. The only difference that we're going to do this time is we're going to paint the, the bones slash horns that's coming out of the uh, the character, out of the model. With it being Nurgle, it's quite a dirty model. I'm a dirty boy. So I like these dark colours used on these models. We're going to go more shade towards the horn area, the base of the horn than the tip of the horn. Ignore my camera thing here. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just paint it out of sight. It's perfectly fine. Once you've done two coats on that, we're going to move on to the next colour. Now what we're going to be focusing on is these little um, boils or pox marks. That's all over the pox walker. The disgusting stuff. We're going to use Beltan Green. You can use any other green shade if you've got a camo earth shade or anything like that. Uh, they all work in pretty much the same manner. I do like this colour more. It's one of my favourite colours. And all we're going to do is exactly the same. We're just going to paint it, but we're going to do it more precise this time. Try and cover the whole of the blisters and the pock marks and the, and the warts and stuff and give it a bit of a green shade around it so it looks more like it's plagued. And it'll merge in with the Rikon Flesh shade and with the other shades that you've been doing so far in the model and it'll give you a really good and nice even tone and you'll be able to see those pock marks standing out. With your pox marks done, you should have something similar to this. As you can see, the model already looks fantastic and it's, we've done a few colours if that. Really basic, really simple colouring. I'm going to do the pants this time. I'm going for Death World or Death Forest Green. Um, it's one of my favourite colours. I use it quite a lot for Plague Marines. It's, it's a nice colour. Um, I'm using a wet palette, you can see in the corner. I, I've seen a few tutorials on this. Um, being from the UK, 
some of the materials is quite difficult to find or difficult to uh, match up to what a lot of guys in America are using. But all I'm going to do with this is be really, really careful. Make sure you're not going too mad with it. Don't go too thick with it. It's not like the shades. You need to make sure your paint is nice and thinned and watered down. And then all I'm going to do is be very careful to go around the pants area and make sure that I'm not going over any of the stuff that I've already gone through and just tidying up some of those lines. You are going to need two coats of this paint because it's not the thickest to be quite honest and you want to get a really nice even coat. But once you've gone around it you'll see the model looks even better and now he's got his pants coloured in. The next colour I'm going to be using is Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher is a metallic paint so you don't need to thin it too much, don't go too mad because you will lose some of the consistency in it and the effect that you're going to get with it. Again I'm using it on the wet palette but I'm not going to thin it down because the wet palette's already a little bit moist anyway. That's going to act as a bit of a thinner for Lead Belcher. Just make sure you give it a good shake or a good stir because a lot of the pigment will sit to the bottom and you don't want that because then it'll just be gloopy and, and terrible or really watery along the top. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on the metallic parts of the model now this model specifically is, is using a gun upside down with an, a butter knife or something on the back, back of it so i'm just going to focus on these i'm not going to do all of them the reason being i'm going to focus on some of those later in copper once you're done with the lead belcher the gun's going to stand out quite nicely or the weapon that it's holding these hands is going to stand out quite nicely it's a really cool color I'm going to now do the copper um, and brass scorpion. This is really good. It's not a base paint. It's a layer paint, but I find it's quite thicker than a lot of the other base paints in this sort of range. And all you're going to do with this, again, is focus on the remainder of the parts that you've not painted yet. So pick them out as you will. Use your own discretion. However you kind of want to paint it. I find that the blades and the rusty parts look better in copper. So that's what I'm going to focus on here. As you can see, straight away by painting those little bits in Brass Scorpion, the weapon's starting to stand out and look a bit more um, higgledy-piggledy, which is what you want. You don't want it all silver, all uniformed. It's not supposed to be that sort of model. Uh, I'm now going to do some um, brown in Gorthor Brown. It's a really nice chocolatey colour, this, and I use it for quite a lot of the leather work, um, belts, pouches, that sort of stuff. It always looks really good on the models. Uh, this one is quite a thick paint, so you are going to need to thin it down a little bit. You don't want it to be too gloopy and lose a lot of the detail, but... On this model specifically, you have got a belt around his back and also two little uh, pouches. Once the belt and pouches are done on the model, you're pretty much ready to go. You can run this as standard if you wanted to and start playing games with this model. I do want to put a little bit more detail in it, so I'm going to pick up Screamer Pink. It's one of um, the colours that I tend to use for things like maggots, leeches, um, that sort of stuff on the model. A lot of people like to use more fleshy tones or pale tones, but I think it should stand out. So I tend to go for a more of a bright colour. And all I'm going to do with this one is make sure I go around the whole model and pick out any of the leeches or maggots that's kind of sticking out on the model. And it's going to give a really nice contrast against the skin. With all the leeches done, we're going to pick up the Nuln Oil. Now this is perfect for things like metals or for uh, any cloth that you want to dirty up a little bit. It gives a nice little black effect to it, like a, a, a oily, um, worn, rusty tone to it. So I'm going to put it all over the weapon. That's the bronze and the lead belcher, um, so the silver, and then all over the pants as well. And I'm going to do two layers on the metallics and only one on the pants. Once my first layer has been applied on the weapon, as you can see, it looks better, but it could still be a little bit dingy, a bit more darker. So I'm going to grab the Nuln Oil again, and we're going to slap on another layer on this metallics. With the second layer of Nuln Oil applied, you can see the weapon is a lot more dingy now, a lot more darker, a lot more old and rusty. That's exactly the sort of thing we wanted. So now I'm going to use a Shabti Bone. And this one is definitely an optional step. If you wanted to do a really easy painting, leave it as it is. Um, it's quite difficult doing the last thing you want to do is start messing up your model but what I'm going to do is use this for the teeth so I'm going to use a really steady hand and I'm just going to brush over the top of the teeth and just define them a little bit different to the rest of the skin just so they stand out as you can see the teeth are a slightly different shade now a little different color and it makes it stand out we're going to move on to the eyes again don't tempt us if you don't want to tempt it. There's no reason to. I'm just doing it for the detail. I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet because I like the idea of these being quite zombie-like and having bright red evil looking eyes. So I'm going to use this with one of my tiny brushes. I'm going to have a really, really steady hand and I'm going to paint just the eyeballs. Now on this model, 
one of the eyes is half closed so you've got to do um, half an eyeball where the second one is full just be careful don't get it all over your model when you finish the eyes the face is pretty much there or thereabouts all I'm going to do as a final sort of touch is grab some Agrex Earthshade I'm going to load a little bit onto the brush I'm going to go across the teeth they're already a different colour to the rest of the skin but this is going to give it a bit of shade and a bit more definition the model is now looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it and all we've really used is shade and a few colours. I'm going to pick up some technical paints from Nurgle's Rot. I really like this stuff especially for these things to make them look a bit more disgusting a little bit more uh, putrid. So all I'm going to do is put a little bit onto the brush and then all the open sores and blisters and boils I'm just going to dip it inside and make it look as if it's leaking out as if it's like dripping down the skin. When this dries it does look a little bit like sick and it looks really good on the model and it's a really easy technical paint to do. Doesn't take much skill but adds quite a lot of definition and extra detail to your model. As a bit of a final sort of extreme step if you want to take it to the 10th level I'm going to use some Stormhose Silver and the Lead belcher that we've gone around and null noil and made all dirty. I'm just going to pick a few edges and I'm going to edge highlight it. And what this does is give the effect of it being like battered and bruised a little bit and um, having sharp metal. As you can imagine, um, metal that's been sheared off or that's been uh, torn or broken has got a bit of a sharp edge. So all I'm going to do is pick a few edges, a few nuts and bolts. I'm just going to go through it and give it a nice little highlight. The Stormo Silver on the edges has as you can see as I'm twisting this round in the light give it a nice little reflection and I quite like that I'm then going to use some more technical stuff called Nilac Oxide and this is the effect of copper or bronze that has been left out in the rain and oxidized it gives it a bit of a blue tinge so if you've ever seen anything uh, copperish that has started to rust you'll notice the rust is actually blue I'm going to put it in some of the pock marks on inside the metal where it looks like it's rusted and started um, decaying and also a little bit along some of the angles as well as if uh, water or recessed dirt and dust has got inside there and started to rust it. Following on for what we did with the Stormo Silver, I'm going to do the same with Hashnut Copper across the rest of the sort of the brass and the copper look. This is going to give it again another bit of an edge highlight and it's almost as if this is the, the sharp edges of the copper. And all I'm going to focus this part on is actually the bottom of the rusty blade. You can see on the model there's a physical line, a bit of an angle where the blade would be. I'm just going to follow that and trace it across and give it a bit more of a shine. As a final piece on the model, all I've done is use some sterling mud to give the base a little bit of texture and paint it around the rim. And that is your pox walker done. Really easy, really simple, tabletop ready, and something you can show and impress your mates. Anyone can do this, anyone can paint it. So guys, as you can see, this is a really simple way of getting your miniatures tabletop ready, whether you're playing Kill Team or 40K, or whether it's something else that you're painting entirely different to Games Workshop models. This sort of methodology and the way that I've kind of gone through it is just to show you that anyone can do this. It's really, really simple. I've not used any special techniques or anything at all. It's very, very basic, but ultimately gives you a really cool finish that you can show off to your friends and especially when you're playing games. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you like this style of video. This is what I'm going to be doing on my channel from now onwards. So if you want to help and support you can hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already and share it around with your friends. I'll be doing more content like this probably once a week. So if there's anything you'd like to see specifically or if you've got anything that you'd like to ask just leave us a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All the tools and all the paints and the colours that I've used today during this session will be linked in the description below. I'm also opening a Discord chat, so if you'd like to come along and have a bit of a chat with me, see what's going on, we can chat amongst ourselves as painters, the link will be in the description. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you next week.